So friends, <clears throat> let's look into the search patterns. First and foremost is the expanding square search. Uh, as you can see uh, into the diagram over here, this is the expanding square search diagram. This is how it looks. Now expanding square search, now this pattern is most effective when the location of the search object is known and is within relatively close limits. And uh, then the commencement of the search point, this is the search point. The commencement of the search point is known as the datum. Your first and foremost leg of the search is into the wind in order to avoid navigational errors. Then this pattern is used when search area is small. Okay. So, and hence, as the search area is small, it is recommended that uh, not, no, not many units uh, need not be used, like multiple aircrafts or multiple vessels need not be used for such a search pattern. Hence, usually a single, this, is, this search is uh, usually represented by a single unit search. And this is how it looks. This is the uh, datum. Here is the, this is the commencement of the search point. And S, S, 2S, 2S, 3S, 3S, 4S, 4S, 5S, 5S, 6S, 6S and so on. This is how your expanding square search is done. So moving on to our next uh, search pattern which is sector search. Sector search is indicated with the code VS where V indicates sector search and S indicates single unit to be used. As you can see over here, this is the diagram for sector search and this, the, the name itself suggests it is for sector is to be searched. Hence, it is most effective when the position of the search object is accurately known and the area to be searched is very, uh, a small area is to be searched. Okay. Hence, it is called sector search and hence as the area is small, no multiple units to be used, no multiple aircrafts or vessels are recommended in this type of search. Hence, a single unit search is sufficient and is recommendable. Now, the datum is present at the center of the circular search area and to mark it, or to make it as a reference point, you may drop a, a smoke float or a radio beacon may be dropped in order to mark the center of the circular area as a reference point. And uh, remember that this search pattern, the search pattern radius may differ for aircrafts and for vessels. The search pattern radius for aircraft may, be, may lie between 5 nautical mile to 20 nautical mile. And the search pattern radius for vessels may lie between 2 nautical mile to 5 nautical mile. And the this uh, each turn is of 120 degree okay and let's uh, look at the diagram over here this is the first this is the commencement of the search point this is the first leg this is your first crossing this is the second leg this is the second crossing this is the third leg and this is the third crossing now once this cycle is completed you take a 30 degree deviation over here to go for the second cycle so this is all about your uh, uh, sector search So friends, <clears throat> moving on to our third search pattern, which is track line search. Now track line search is used when an aircraft or a vessel has disappeared along its known route. So this is the track, usually uh, a vessel or an aircraft which disappears along the known route. Uh, this type of search pattern is used. Now in track line search, uh, often it is used as an initial search effort due to the ease of planning and implementation. So this, is, this type of search pattern is used initially and then uh, a rapid and reasonably thorough search is required along the intended route of the distress craft. So this is the, the route of the distress craft, a thorough and a rapid search is required along this area. So we have two search patterns. One is uh, track line search return and track line search non-return. Now in track line search return what happens is search may be along one side of the track line and return in the opposite direction on the other side. So this type of search is known as track line search return in which the distance from the track of the missing aircraft would be of half a leg on either side. So this is track line search return and in track line search non-return what happens is your search would be carried out along the intended track of the missing aircraft and then on the either side and then the facility will continue on its way. It won't return. So this type of search is known as track line search non-return and they are uh, coded as TSR and TSN. TSR for track line search return and TSN for track line search non-return. Now aircrafts are usually used for this type of search pattern because of uh, the high speed they have. Okay, they can cover much uh, a larger area in a very less time. Hence aircrafts are used. Now aircraft search height during day 
what is the usual height is to be 300 meters to 600 meters or between 1000 to 3000 feet and during night uh, 600 to 900 meters uh, or between 2000 to 3000 feet so this is the requirement for your track line search Search pattern number four is the parallel sweep search. A parallel sweep search, as the name suggests, you are going to sweep an area parallelly in order to search. So this is the pattern which is formed. Now parallel sweep search is used usually to cover a larger area and when the location of the survival is uncertain. In such a condition, parallel sweep search is the best option to be used. And this is most effective over water or flat terrain. Then. Uh, Parallel sweep search is usually used when a larger area must be divided into sub-areas for assignment to individual search facilities on scene at the same time. So a larger area subdivided into sub-areas and individual facilities are assigned to carry, carry out the parallel sweep searches. So in this what happens, a larger area is covered and uh, you are uncertain of the location of the survivor. Hence, this type of search can be carried out. The commencement of search point is in one of the corner, as you can see over here, uh, of the sub area. This is the sub area. Uh, it is present half a track space from either side inside to the rectangle from either side of the sides meeting at the corner. That is your commencement of search point. And then search leg. Now search leg, as you can see, lies parallel to all the other search legs. Okay. So search legs are parallel to each other and to the long side of the sub area. This is the long side of the sub area and the search leg lies parallel to it also. Now multiple vessels may be used in this type of search. Maybe uh, two vessels may be used a parallel sweep search with two vessels is possible with three vessels, parallel sweep search with four vessels, parallel sweep search with five or more vessels is also possible. Kindly look at the uh, further figures for much better understanding. So friends, search pattern number 5 is the creeping line search. Now creeping line search is almost same as in your as your parallel sweep searches. But in parallel sweep searches, a single units are assigned for a specific areas. Single units are assigned in order to carry out the parallel sweep searches. Whereas in a creep line search, what happens is it's a coordinated search in which a vessel as well as an aircraft is involved. Okay, so what happens is the aircraft does mo most of the searching while the ship steams along a coast at a speed as directed by the on-scene coordinator so that the aircraft can use it as a navigational checkpoint so this is the aircraft aircraft will go like this in this pattern and use the ships uh, the ship as a uh, reference point and what the aircraft does is uh, whenever it passes the ship okay it makes some corrections in order to uh, be in line with the uh, search pattern keep in line with the search pattern so it makes corrections and accordingly alters its uh, speed now what happens in this type of search pattern it gives a higher probability of detection then uh, that can normally be attained by an aircraft searching alone so compared to parallel ship searches your creeping line search would be more accurate now in this also a larger search area would be involved and this is the diagram for creeping line search coordinated. So friends, uh, calculation of the datum. Now calculation of the datum is usually done by your search and rescue mission coordinators in along with, uh, in along with coordination with the on-scene coordinators. Now remember that this, this is how your uh, calculation of datum is done. Now, once the datum is provided, your search area would depend on how good the datum is. Okay, so uh, calculation of the datum is very important. Now, let us look into case 1, where you have the position of the target. Where you have the position of the target, this is the initial position, this is the last known position. And the search area would, is taken as usually 10 miles radius is taken as a search area from the last known position or the datum. Datum is nothing but it is the most prob probable position of the target. Okay, so a 10 miles radius is what is taken. Usually this is a, a thumb roll which is taken in order to look out for the search area.
So our next topic is the six steps in developing a search and rescue plan. Now the SMC does this along with the inputs from on-scene coordinators. The six steps in developing search and rescue plan is as follows. Number one, define the target. Number two, define the datum. Number three, define the search area. Number four, select appropriate search pattern. Number five, determine coverage of search area. And number six, and uh, this is the last one, which is develop a practical search plan. So these are the six steps in developing a search and rescue plan. Now the first point, or step number one, define the target. Now you have to define the type of target. What is the target? Is it a life raft? Is it an uh, aircraft? Uh, is it a helicopter crashed? <clears throat> is it persons floating? So what is your target? So the type of target, maybe a life raft is there. So life raft may be the target. The size of the target, the color of the target, then how many persons are there on board that target, then the emergency equipments present on board, etc. And uh, the, uh, you define the target based on the information you have received from the distress uh, alert received. So that is defining the target is the first step. Step number two, define the datum. Now datum is the most probable position of the target which is calculated by the SMCs uh, in coordination with the on-scene coordinators. So define the datum is your step number two. Step number three, define the search area. Now defining the search area will depend on how good the datum is. How good the information you have received regarding the datum, data will define the search area. Now how many units are required? Datum depends on how many units are required, resources required, for example, aircrafts, vessels, divers, etc. Then step number four, select the appropriate search pattern as per the requirement. Now this is decided by the SMC with the on-scene coordinator. They decide on this. Step number five, determine the coverage of the search area. Now how much coverage can be uh, done of the search area? The coverage of the search area is uh, determine the coverage of the search area. Now the coverage factor which depends on the resources available and also the time, how much time you are going to give. For example, how many, how, much, how many resources you have. You have divers available, you have aircraft, you have vessels available. So what all resources are available within that search and rescue region. So uh, as per uh, that will uh, determine the coverage of the search area. Uh, let's take an example of the classroom. Now for cleaning a classroom, you require resources such as brooms, your uh, mop, vacuum cleaner and the number of persons available. <coughs> Point number six, develop a practical search plan. Now this plan has to be practical in the sense as per the present environmental conditions and weather conditions. The plan should be suitable as per the present circumstances and conditions. So these are the six steps in developing a search and rescue plan.